Walk round, do 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 do. Compound, do 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 do. Big stretch. Big yawn. Well, maybe medium sized yawn. Hi, Essie. Essie, Essie, choo choo. Ezzy, Ezzy. I don't know why I incor. I can't remember. There was something has to do with like the Ezra train or something like that. Hi. Hi. Hi, Peace. Hi, Mr. Peace. Hi, Mr. Peace. I know, but I was looking at Ezzy first. And look at the little meat meat over there. Bleh. <laughs> look at that little sausage. Oh my gosh. Cute little sausage tiger. Cute little sausage tiger. Izzy! Choo choo! All aboard the Dorps train! <gasps> and then there's Zara! Mm. Hi, Vivi! <laughs> Hello! Hello! <laughs> what do you know, hon? Yeah. Hi, sugar pie. You are a pie that is made of sugar. It's like, don't you want to put some extra ingredients in there? I mean, maybe like what? Like, you know, like egg and flour for the crust. Maybe like, you know, some apple or cherry filling or something like that. Nope. Just sugar. Sugar and sugar and sugar and more sugar. Hmm. The pie doesn't sound terribly too appetizing. It just sounds like a pile of sugar. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it is. It's Jake Jake. Mr. Jake. Oh, it's still humid. It's still humid and gross. It just... Hopefully, maybe like another week or something like that, and we'll finally see this stuff just go away. And I'm... I, yeah... It's just, people are like, enough about the weather, Derek. I'm like, it is, it needs to go away. It is starting to just, it, it gets you. It starts to get in, like, to your head. It wears on you. It's not, it's not a good thing. And then you start to sit, you start to think, like, it should be cool by now. It is supposed to be cool. Nah, we've had, like, late summers before. And then it's like, the, here you'll have like the weird kind of, um, maybe like 80, 90 degrees, like for like these random days in October, November, even into December. Yeah. That's, that's Texas for you. That's Texas for you. Hello all you big cat lovers out there, it's me Derek again, welcome to another super duper fantastic episode of the Walk Around the Compound webcast. I am already, <laughs> oh, I'm all moist and drippy, already, already, it's going to be a good one, it's going to be a good one, you know when it's like early like that, oh boy, look at this cute little girl, look at this cute little girl, my goodness. Capture, capture. We'll see if we can try to actually do something with these captures. We'll see if we can actually do something with these captures. See if I can put them on like an Instagram or something. I don't know why I said it like that, but I did. I'm going to go ahead and shut this door. <clears throat> We're going to go into the center into the inner sanctum, so it's gonna get a little bit loud for you headphone users. You headphone pride members. <clears throat> Hi, ooh, it's nice in here. I can see why you guys wanna spend time in here. This is all right, yep. Hi, Mr. Mido. 
Look at your chin. He's got a chin. That's got fuzz. Fuzz chin. Beautiful eyes. Oh yeah. He's all right. And then there's this one. Hi. How are you? Oh jeez, I almost fell over. Hi baby. Do you have any other words of wisdom? Tidbits? Bits of tid? I guess what is it? What is a tid? And why is it only appropriate to have bits of them? You know what? Maybe I want to have a bucket of tid. Maybe I want to have chunks of tid. You know? Not tidbits. Tid chunks. I know it's not necessarily the most kind of popular thing. People are just like, oh my gosh, you, you're only supposed to have bits of tid. You know, you're not supposed to have like, you're not supposed to have reams of tid or chunks of tid. But I'm a little bit different. I go against the green. And I understand it's not the normal way that you do things, but it's just kind of the way that I've appreciated. I've come, it's the way that I've come to appreciate my tid. Just big old heaping scoops of it. Scoops of tid. Barrels of tid. Really, you're only supposed to just kind of sprinkle bits of tid, Derek. No, not me. I'm an individual. I'm different. I'm so different. Hmm. Nice segue into the topic. I wasn't even planning on having like a smooth segue like that, but you know what? It happened. Magically just stumbled upon it because I wanted to talk a little bit about that. That's what I wanna wanna this is gonna be one of those uh topical casts. Where we're gonna kinda go, we're gonna delve into some concept kind of thing that I was talk I was I was thinking about. Hi sugar pie, you gonna come over here? Yeah, murder. I saw Noe up in there. She's up in that one. And yeah, you can see the side of her head. Side of her head. Focus. There we go. Nice. But I was thinking about, you know, the nature of individualism and individuality. And people who kind of wear that as a as a badge on their chest that whole notion I am a unique person I am a maverick I am I I bust all the norms I break all the molds and how sometimes that whole notion the idea of that that comes from like a genuine place and a lot of times it's not a lot of times individuality much like so much other stuff is uh, very concocted and very predictable and I would know because I kind of gone through like different weird little things like that but a big part of it is just there's times where you, uh, well, there's times where, remember me growing up, where I was kind of like the oddball, the odd duck, the weirdo, and everything. Guys, I kind of thought and, you know, felt differently, and I kind of acted on a different spectrum. And, of course, you have the different kind of things like the, the whole ADHD kind of thing that was never diagnosed until I was in my 30s <laughs> uh, so then you know you, you do like like I remember I, I had like kind of a I was a, a little bit off of like the spectrum or I was a little bit off of like the normal quote normal wavelength but only by a little bit I still functioned and was able to kind of exist very well we got Calvin coming in. He's going to be making some gates. He's going to be making some gates. Making gates. Inside. 
here inside this place with all these gentlemen's Galvin, our guy, Alabama. Oh. Yeah. He's gonna weld stuff. Oh. I know, that's kinda neat. But just whenever he welds, like don't look directly into those welds because you know, you only got the one good eye. I know. I know. But sometimes it's like I remember starting off like at a basis. I was at a a baseline of like okay I'm I'm slightly slightly off kilter and that does come from like kind of a natural kind of place I'm gonna go ahead and pause hold on what up I was in there cleaning his enclosure yesterday and he was being an absolute a-hole oh he was I thought I I, uh, I almost took my stinking sandal off from a hat thinking I was gonna have to whap him because it's like if you come after me bud we're gonna have problems <laughs> yeah, Max it's like don't even try it oh I am sweating it's like 80 it's like 81 81 degrees outside that's it that's it but I'm like this, I've got, I'm glowing. It's so gross. It's so gross. So gross. All right. Anyway, anyway. Oh, Ezzy. Ezzy, Ezzy, Choo Choo. Let's go through here because I don't think that we're gonna be seeing any other cats over there, so we're just gonna go this way. Oh. Being an individual, being a special, unique flower or snowflake. There's a lot of different things. I, I kind of want to break it down a little bit. I, I kind of, you know, I remember growing up. You want to set yourself apart, and then you want to be, you're young, and you want to express yourself. Especially because you get older, get, like, go middle school, going into high school. Oh, gosh, I was colorful. I wore black-rimmed yellow glasses, almost like goggles, you know, I would wear all these crazy shirts and just like orange jumpsuit pants and like five or six like necklaces at the same time. Oh my gosh. It's so cringy. Dye my hair different colors. Oh yeah. When I had hair. Yes, I did. All that stuff. Because I was different, man. As like an individual, I don't follow the green. I'm different. And I think different. I act different. I behave differently. Sure. Now, some of that does come from, like, a place. And that's what I was talking about. Some people do have kind of... They've got some stuff kind of going on in their brain. It just is... It makes them kind of more naturally inclined to just kind of think and act and be different. So, yeah. I, I did have... That whole, the Adi Achdi kind of thing. And I think that that was a major catalyst for a lot of that stuff. Um, because when you're talking about some of the different, some of the different struggles that I had, um, whether it be different things as far as uh, impulsivity, emotional dysregulation, there's like a number of different things that just were naturally a part of me that I didn't quite understand and again it was never really diagnosed so then you spend a lot of your like me i spent a lot of my childhood kind of uh knowing I, i'm a little bit different and sometimes it can make for kind of uncomfortable situations and sometimes people can kind of look at you just kind of like what the hell what's going on so then you start to develop kind of this 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 persona this character like okay i i it's hard for me to kind of like operate exactly on a on a proper wavelength so then i'm also going to kind of instead of really trying to work on certain things and, and adjust that and and make myself a little bit more you know part of the collective i'm gonna kind of go a little bit more to the opposite and that's more of a conscious choice 
So then you started to kind of do, and this was me, and I'm talking from my own personal experience. I started to do different things as far as I'm just going to really kind of develop, you know, I'm going to embrace the impulsiveness. I'm going to try to make myself more just kind of funny and just weird, and I'm going to, that's going to be what I'm known for. And then, and this was a conscious thing. So like when, when I act, you know, when I have moments where I'm like legitimately not having like a good time as far as like I'm having like disruptive kind of brain kind of stuff or I'm having a more, more impulsive day than normal and I'm having a difficult time kind of operating within like a normal framework, I can just basically point to quote the, the persona and I can sit there and say like, oh yeah, that's, that's part of the whole, the, that's the weird guy. Right? It was it was like a mask. It was a it was a smoke screen. That was a big part of it. Oh oh gosh, there was a tiger in the bushes. There was a tiger in the bushes. Hi. Yeah. So there was like that you have to understand it's like okay, so like this notion of like individuality and whatnot. Because again, and so many people have like this thing. It's like you want to feel, you want to feel important. You want to feel unique. You want to feel like you're, you're something different than, than the rest. But I don't know. The older I've gotten, the more, the more I see the similarities of people. The more I see like familiar patterns. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Um, you know, some people can look at things like very cynically, and they can sit there and say like, you know, it's just like everyone's just kind of like running, like they're like ants, you know, like on a just like part of like the the ant hill and that's all that we're all doing it's just like we're making the hill and we're just like gathering resources for the queen man okay all right you do realize it's like we're we're, we're kind of like a natural part of the world um, yeah and that we are biologic creatures and we have evolved via natural physical processes so of course we're going to express our inherent biology in familiar patterns. That's just how that is. Tigers are going to act like tigers. And people are going to act like people. And there's really not as much variability within that as I think a lot of people would like to make it seem. And then, you know, so, and I know, and I have to, and I, I had to kind of like take inventory of my own, of my own kind of sense of that. Like how much of my quote individuality and uniqueness how much of that was actually me and how much of that was concocted how much of that was actually fabricated out of what i felt what i felt to be a necessity but really what more like that was more than uh likely just uh i guess insecurity and everything and and like unsureness as you get older and as you try to operate in the world and and you have to develop again oh gosh that, uh, it was, it's, it's been like getting that ADHD diagnosis has been honestly one of the most important things I think that ever happened to me because it really did, it gave me a solid framework for like, oh, this is actually why you do this. So, like some, some of the things that you do, this is why you do some of the things that you do. And here are a couple of different things that you can also do to, to help try to mitigate and then try to operate and function a little bit better. Also, you can take like medication. There's like different things that you can do and it, and it just helps you. It, it helps your, hi, it helps your engine run better. Helps your engine run better. That's why a lot of times it's like, I, I look at people who just like, I need to express myself as like this kind of thing. And they dress just kind of weird and they do some, but you know, a lot of times it's like people will do this kind of weird stuff. And then it, it, it's, it's, then it, it, it becomes the predictable thing. I'm an individual. And then you're also kind of dressing like other people who kind of identify with that. Like I need to express my individuality thing. Thank you very much for your pee. Thank you for, for your donation. Appreciate your contribution, good sir. I'm going to wear crazy clothes and I'm going to get myself tatted up and I'm going to do different kind of modifications and whatnot. And it's like, all right, 
eventually like at one point that was like a thing but now it's it's like a ton of people do that a ton of people do stuff like that i'm gonna act weird and whatnot and it's like well how much of that is actually yeah it's i don't know maybe this is actually me being a little bit more cynical too because again it's like i think that it's important to you know question tradition it's important to make sure that you're not just you know blindly following uh i guess uh i i i dogmatic modes of being that that thought processes and ideologies should always uh, have a healthy do dose of scrutiny applied to them but not so much that you throw out stuff that is just like hey you know sometimes people organize themselves in a way and then it just kind of it works and and just because it's a way that things have been done for a long time doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. And I think that that's something... You see a lot of different things where people think that anything that has to do with tradition or anything that has to do with what appears to be like outdated... Out, outdated modes of kind of human being, then it's bad and it needs to be kind of taken out and eradicated. It needs to be... You know, like we're, we just need to make way for the new way of doing things. So yeah, it's, I think that trying to be as uh, rational as possible, trying to, trying to actually be open, open enough to new ideas so that you're not, you're not living in basically like a static bubble. But then not being so open that you 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 choose you willingly throw out good things that have worked for a long time. You know what I'm saying? I have to be as unique as possible. Like, you go to sometimes, you know, a little bit more of these kind of hipstery places. And I remember seeing, it was like different, maybe BuzzFeed or like Pinterest articles. Like, some of the most hipsteriest of hipster pictures that have ever hipstered. And, ever, like, people are, just like, wearing their, you know, they're drinking their PBR. And they've got their curly Q mustaches. And maybe one guy's wearing a banana suit while he's, like, trying to ride a tricycle that uh, it's got a turntable on it and everything and it's basically it's like this whole thing where it's it's clearly concocted individualism it's basically sitting there saying just like look at how much of a wacky individual i am aren't i so different and special and unique and coming from someone who in so many regards like it's almost like there was there was a time where i felt like i was a prisoner of that of that sense i was a prisoner of the fact that I, I, in many ways, acted and behaved differently. So, sometimes it can be, sometimes it can be a little bit overrated. I'm just telling you that, that sometimes being able to, you know, kind of operate and just, hey, just kind of, just be, uh, because then, okay, I was about to say, like, how oh, just be a normal person. Well, there's no such thing. Of course. And not, if people are going to be like, you're too hard on yourself, Derek. I'm not trying to be hard on myself. I, I wouldn't change who I am for anything. That's not the point that I'm trying to make. It's, uh, I'm just trying to tell folks, like, hey, just... A big part of it is just simply being comfortable just being you. And they, sometimes that sounds a little bit trite and it sounds a little bit kind of cliched. But it's true. Um, and there's going to be moments where, you know what, you are going to sit there and, and be faced with oppositional thought. Maybe the group is going to have a thing and you're not going to feel that thing. You're not going to vibe with that thing. You don't want to feel just because the group happens to be doing it. Don't sit there and feel like you have to go along with what the group is saying. It's okay to be you in those moments. But then at the same time... Just because you happen to like a thing that is liked widely, that is liked universally, doesn't make you, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Momo, 
doesn't make you one of the one of the sheeple. I go against the grain. I'm not one of the sheeple. I've seen people who they they it's like and we all know it and we've met them. You see those people where it's like they have that need to be an individual so much that they end up just turning into just a contrarian jerk. And then they're condescending. Oh, you like that thing? Um, well, I didn't know you were one of this shit. Sips PBR. It's just so silly. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's that resurrection lily. That's exact. I'm not even joking. That's what it is. It's grown in that same exact spot for the last three years. And that is the spot that Zeus died. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? The thing is like native to like Japan. How, how did it get? We have no idea how it got here. And it's literally called, we just looked it up. It's called the resurrection lily. You kidding me? Hi, bud. Hi. Yeah. So yeah. Don't, it's, it's like, you got to find a balance in life. Don't free, don't, don't be afraid to be yourself. And then at the same time, don't be afraid to like things that other people like. And don't be afraid to try to model parts of your life over other things that have been tried and true things that just simply work. That being, being open-minded, but at the same time, having you know like like embracing of traditions not a bad thing either one it's when you go to the extremes like it's only the tradition or it's just like it's only new it's it's not good not good just try to be the best person that you can be just try to live a good life just try to be you know as true to yourself as possible and you're never gonna fully get it's never, you're never going to fully, 100%, you know, just be the most honest representation of you. There's a, we all wear masks. We all wear faces. We all put on shows. We all sometimes kind of like put out like hyper extended versions of ourselves. Hi, Rasa. <laughs> and don't think that you're any different. We all do it. I do it. Everyone does it. To what degree? And how self-aware are you? That's kind of one of the big things. If you sit there and think like, I don't do it. I'm always myself. I'm, I'm a unique flower and I'm an individual and I'm average. It's like, you know what? You're delusional. You're kind of part of like maybe the problem. You're kind of part of like the more negative elements that I've kind of tried to, to, to elaborate upon. If you sit there and refuse to think that it, you're capable of being that person, you are way more like lost in the sauce than you would even be able to comprehend and understand. Take a long, hard look at yourself. Hello, hi. I think a lot of it maybe just boils down to just honesty. Just try to be honest. That's the best. And like really just try to look, always try to look inward, always try to be mindful. When I say try to be honest, just that you gotta be honest, be honest with you. And that's the most important person that you could ever be honest with, is you. You being honest with you. And that doesn't necessarily mean being like overly cynical, it doesn't mean being overly critical, it doesn't mean you know, bashing on yourself. It just means just like, hey, am I being, am I being the best? Am I being the most truthful? Am I living in the most truthful manner? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's it. And hey, even though I'm talking about like, hey, just, you know, 
concocted individuality is a thing doesn't that doesn't mean that I'm saying that a little bit of flair is bad. We could always use a little flair in our lives. Just remember that too. I I hope that I was able to kind of make sense. I know that kind of jumped around a lot. Probably could have like spent a little bit more time actually kind of cooking the cooking the concept a little bit, but I think for the most part I got some of the ideas out that I wanted to get out. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Also, hashtag Dorbist Award in the comment section. As always, thank you for watching this episode of the Walk Around the Compound webcast. I will see you folks next week. Bye-bye.